Many short oval races end up racing on the long circuits as part of a career progression as they see it, but uh, one man who went kind of the other way with that was Damon Wellman who races two litre hot rods these days. He's had a wealth of experience on the long tracks in all sorts of cars, saloons, single seaters, still involved doing track days. Tell us a little bit about your CV. Uh, well, started with Speedworth, as you know, Paul. Um, mini stocks, then stock rods, and then we decided to go to the long circuits. Uh, Formula Ford, Formula 2000, what was then Formula Renault, uh, Renault Sport, saloon cars, some touring cars, Formula 3, and then eventually back to Speedworth. Yeah, yeah you came back with the unique camouflage coloured 1300 stock car, as I recall. That was your, your re returning machine, wasn't that? Wow, your memory's better than mine, Paul. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. We did. We had a camouflage coloured stock car. Yeah, that was good fun. That was. It was nice to come back from serious racing, having done it as a career for 10 years, yeah. um, to actually come back to something that you are just doing for fun. And yeah. that's what, unfortunately, many people forget is the fact that we are doing this for fun. Yeah, and of course, I suppose at the serious end of circuit racing, there's not a heck of a lot of fun about it, it's all business, but how close did you get to a Formula One seat? I mean, you've been in them for test purposes, I believe. I have been in there for test purposes. Um, I, I think it was 90, late 90s, 97, 98. Um, I finished second in the uh, British F3 uh, for uh, B class. Um, so we were racing all across Europe, Spa, Belgium, um, Zandvoort in Holland, um, various, various circuits, as well as obviously all the British circuits. Um, but you get to the stage with long circuit racing, especially in single seaters, where what you win is the ability to spend more money the following year. Right, and the budgets uh, just climb and climb and climb. But you're still a little bit involved in that sort of thing, but it's good to see you back in, the, in oval racing, where it seems to me where your heart really is, and you've just managed a bit of a unique thing in, the, in being an English hot rod driver. You went to Ireland the other week and won a race. Yes, yes, we uh, went to Ireland and managed to take one of the trophies away from the Irish. Unfortunately, it wasn't the important one, um, but uh, yeah, we uh, had a heat win out there, had a really good weekend. Um, it's just a shame that the uh, the main race didn't go as well as we'd like to have, to have done. But uh, but yeah, to come home, you know, from Ireland and take one of their trophies and bring it back here um, is is nice to do. Yeah, because the heat win for your championship put you somewhere towards the front of the grid in the main event. I take it, and that made you a little bit of a target. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, uh, finishing. At, um, the, as you say, finishing first, and then I think we had an eighth in the second heat off the back, which was great. Um, but it did put us on a, a grid draw for second, third, and fourth. Unfortunately, um, call it English luck, but we drew fourth out of the hat, and that's how it is. But it put us on the outside. Um, if we'd have been on the inside, it would have been a whole different ball game. But unfortunately, you got 35 cars are all going into that corner, um, and the only ones that are going to break are the first two or three cars. And unfortunately, I was in that first two or three cars, and the other 30. Two cars behind us didn't seem to bother a break. <laughs> That's an unfortunate turn of events, but not entirely unexpected when the competition is as intense as that. It's the World Championship coming up soon. Are you uh, down for that? Unfortunately not, no. Um, although, you know, we are prepared to travel. Unfortunately, South Africa is just uh, a little bit out of our budget and a little bit far to go. And unfortunately, as I say, it tends to be forgotten that this is a hobby and we do it for a bit of fun. We we can't race at every single meeting, uh, you know, we'd like to, um, but the you know, travel costs, etc, etc, we just can't afford to do it. So I, I've kind of done the whole travelling thing, living out of a suitcase um, and going all over the, all over Europe uh, to go racing and spending a lot of time in America and stuff. So we're we're with Speedyworth to have fun. Obviously, Eastbourne is a great track for us because it's 20 minutes down the road. But, you know, we still go to Yarmouth, we go to Ipswich, and we travel to Ireland. Um, South Africa, a little bit too far for us. Great stuff. Well, you've had practice tonight, and uh, you've got a little bit of a misfire with the car first thing. But is that going to go away, do you think? Possibly. Dad seems to think it's because I washed it. So it could be a little bit damp, but um, we'll see. It's, it's classic racing car stuff. We did four races in Ireland. The car didn't miss a beat. It was absolutely perfect. It's sat in the workshop. We've cleaned it, pulled it here. It's got a misfire. That's racing cars. I'm sure it's going to come out well tonight, Damon. Great. Nice to talk to you and good luck on your home track this evening. Thank you very much.
We're in the pits with one of East Anglia's finest, it's George Morphy. Scaffolder for a living and uh, when he's not doing that he's racing stock cars and doing it very well too. Generally in the superstar bracket uh, and he's one of the men involved with a long-term rivalry that's going that's enlivening the fans up in the last couple of years no end. Tell us about your duels with Billy Wood. Well well me and Billy we've sometimes we haven't seen eye to eye but you know when you're racing on the same patch of ground you want to be in front all the time so we generally make sure we move each other no matter what. <laughs> whichever way what so um yeah no we we get on well really I mean uh, you have your little spits and spats but uh overall I mean we're, we're both lads enjoying the hobby and uh we want the same patch of ground simple as so uh <laughs> That's yeah. why it is, really. Yep, both yeah. of you want to be in front, and that's pretty clear. It certainly was at the Speed Weekend recently. That was a lively event, wasn't it? And uh, you had yeah. a pretty good result in the end of the day. Yeah, I managed to managed to sneak a, a second in the in the big final at the end. But uh, you know, you get caught up, and there's uh, plenty of cars out there. So you really just have to keep your head down and make the right moves at the right time. And uh, lady luck be with you. You might be able to get there, but uh, yeah, second I was happy with. Well, when I interviewed you for Short Circuit magazine a couple of years ago, you were still yeah. doing the lightning rods as well, but you've put those behind you now, so it's two litre stock cars, plus, of course, you've got young Will out in the mini stocks. How's that going? Yeah, of course. Um, we're struggling with Will a little bit with the car and what have you, but uh, I had to back off the lightning rod side of things because, uh, you know, I was running two, three, four formulas at one stage, and I'm down to two now, so I should be doing better, really, and so should Will, but time and money and work and everything you know it takes a source and uh, but we have to just keep digging at it and plugging away and eventually you get where you want to be if you uh, if you're determined enough you'll yeah it's it. been a pretty disgusting year for weather really i mean yeah. that's affected the racing on the track but has it affected your business as well um not really i mean we've been we've been had a good year to tell you the truth i mean uh, it's 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 been winter time's not great i mean people don't want scaffold here and there but uh solar panels have been good this year too so you know where there's a where there's a negative you've got to find a positive and we managed to find, find that so. so just as soon as the sun comes out over suffolk you'll have some happy customers then because they'll be warming well, things up yeah, i hope they're happy i mean we do try hard for them but uh you know you always get the odd one down again so yeah that's great but you i mean when you're not racing yourself you're generally at the track enjoying yourself and uh, yes. you come down here to arlington as many times as you can do there how many of the family are racing now because you've got several brothers have all had a go at time to time well yes we've got um i've got a couple of brothers here in motocross doing quite well in that and uh, uh me and my brother rambo he races a two litre and a 1300 and and obviously uh, will has been racing there a couple of years in the minis and uh and i've got charlie another month or two he's going to be in the mini so i've really got to pull my finger out a bit more now so <laughs> <laughs> charlie seems to think that you'll i'll have it all ready and sorted we'll know how to drive these cars get them ready by the time he comes into it lots of practice on the xbox for him and lots of hours in the workshop for you of course of course that's the way it is but that's, uh, that's, that's where meetings are one in the workshop we've got to get in there more you know? george always a pleasure to talk to you thank and you very you. much and that's good to see you again all the best
another red, so we will have a declared result, I suspect, on this one. So 707 is, uh, is burning away.